Hey everyone, how's it going today? Let me know, you can hear me okay. Put my volume up. And of course, let's see if there's a fun filter to use because you know, I'll be a winter. There we go. It kind of matches outside right now because it's been snowing all morning. So I'm gonna, you know, get my Elsa vibes going today. Hey everyone, hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? Happy last Monday of 2020. Woo! <laughs> All right, awesome, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I hope everyone had a relaxing weekend after all the, the holiday craziness or whatever you were doing. I was kind of in between. I was catching up and I was about trying to relax and trying to catch up at the same time. I'm not sure how that really works, but. Oh, yes, we had gotten that three feet of snow and then Christmas day, it rained all day. So then it's like icy, crunchy snow. And then this morning, uh, I don't know, we got a couple inches. I'm, I, it's just been very, very weird weather. Hey everyone, how's it going? Hello, hello. All right. Just waiting to let, let some other people get on. How's everyone doing today? If you don't know me, my name is Jen from Stardust Wanderer Tarot. And that is where I, where I come from, where I appear. And today we'll go through, we'll do some tarot scopes for each zodiac sign see what we got for this full moon coming up maybe what we need to let go of um and then i was going to talk a little bit about tea leaf reading so that's what we have going on for today so today the deck i'm using is the super linaris tarot which I was very excited to get. And I did a um, walkthrough of it on my page with Stardust Wonder Tarot. And they gave me, they shared my post and everything. They are actually super sweet. I love that. I love how, um, like I'm creating a deck also, but I'm kind of in the baby stages of it, I guess. I got about 12 cards. I'm just doing some more um, card descriptions for my artist now. And then she's going to be full speed ahead starting the end of January. So I need to kind of get my button gear to do that. But, um, you know, as far as the deck creators go, I love how we all kind of geek out over each other's decks. You know, it's so much fun and it's such a it's like supportive environment. And I absolutely love it because, you know, there are so many great interpretations of the regular Rider Waite Smith, and I love seeing everybody's and why I have lots of decks, like a lot. We won't discuss that. We'll keep that. We'll keep that on the down low. So, this deck, awesome deck. Woo! Cards jumping out at me. It has this pretty look at this like rose gold edging on it. Love it. It's really cool. Really cool deck. So we'll just give it a little shuffle here. Yes, I'm I'm kind of channeling my Elsa vibes today because I said it's been snowing all day. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the amount of work that goes into making a deck and how long it takes, right? It takes like a couple of years to really to get all of that together, to get your guidebook, to get the art the artists and their work. It is something to be appreciated. So support all of your artists and all of the deck creators because they do some very awesome work. And it's really like kind of like a soul searching process too. Like you really learn about a lot about yourself because you're really diving deep into um, what the cards mean, what they mean for you and finding a way to express that so that everybody it's kind of looking inside your head, you know, it's very personal too. So that is my spiel on deck creating for the day. <laughs> All right. 
what do we got here? Let's see. So I think this week we'll really just kind of focus on, we have this new moon in Gemini showing up. So that is really about kind of everything floating around in your head, thoughts, um, making plans, and all those sorts of things, which is like kind of a great one for this, you know, the as we head into the end of this year. Yay, we're getting there. So I think really too, it's also practicing gratitude, right? Practicing gratitude, um, and even though this year obviously did not and was not what we planned it to be, just trying to find the gratitude in that and accept that, you know, what is the gift that you received this year and looking into that because as we go into 2021, how will you unwrap that gift? How will you make it better for you and for others around you? So let's move right in here to Aries. What do we got for Aries today? So for Aries, um, we have the Five of Cups. So this is actually a kind of a great card. Um, it's leaving behind what no longer serves you. Like what, what can you just leave? What do you not need? It's really asking you um, to dive deep into that and release and let go. It's really time for you to let go of some of those things, Aries. Next we have Taurus. So for Taurus, we have the Six of Cups. And I'm just, I'm just like, look, I love these cards. I love just the artwork on them. So I'm like, I have to stare at them first. So anyway, Taurus, um, for you, it is really just letting go of things that are, I feel, family related um, to make room for that, for the joy of your family, for all of those things. Maybe it's time to just kind of clear out some of the clutter. Um, maybe some little things, maybe it's time to let go of uh, maybe some little disagreements. It's time to let that go so that you could bring this happy family and love and sharing into this new year. Next we have, let's give another shove, Gemini, which is, this is your moon, Gemini. You are... This is your busy time. You're you're in your element and it's a busy time for you and you are loving it. This is this is where it's at for you. And my husband is actually a Gemini moon, uh rising sign, sun sign. Like she's all the Gemini of everything. <laughs> it's really quite his chart is quite interesting. So for Gemini, we have Page of Cups. What a cool, that's a cool card to get because it's a beginning of new emotion. It's new, it's that new, you know, let go of all these things that no longer serve you, that no longer, um, you know, thoughts that you don't need anymore to let some room, make some room for the new emotions that are going to be showing up for this next year coming and um, the good emotions, you know, and bringing that in. So that's what I have for you, Gemini. And also, too, if you guys want me to pull a card for you, just throw it in the comments there, and I could do that for you. All right, so next we have Cancer. So for Cancer, we have the Queen of Pentacles. Oh, I love that. So Cancer, you know, it's time for you to really rearrange that's like the words popping in my head is kind of rearrange your home, make it more open and spacious. Um, you know, maybe change your curtains, do something new, bring something fresh and new in for the new year. That's what I have for you, Cancer. So for a Leo, what do we got for Leo today? So for Leo, whoops, we have the sun. That is an awesome card, Leo, could because you are just full of life. So you know what? Bring that into next year. Be the sun for other people. That's what I really feel like this is telling us today is be the light. Be the light for other people. If you are coming across anyone in this next week or so that's just kind of like blah, whatever, shine some of that Leo energy on them. They are, they need it and will much appreciate it. Whoa, so we had a jumper here, so let's grab that. <laughs> I almost 
almost lost it. It almost just totally jumped right onto the floor. So for you, Virgo, the lovers. So this bad boy jumped out at me. So this week is all about relationships. It's all about big relationships in your life and working on, you know, um, working on them, I guess. Just working on paying attention to them. Um, maybe also, maybe even your relationship with yourself because that's kind of popping in my head too, like working on the light and the dark of yourself as well. So however that resonates for you, definitely, um, you know, think about that. Think about the relationships you have and the relationship with yourself and how maybe working on yourself can make those other relationships a little bit better as well. Hey, everyone who just joined us. Whoops, I keep trying to hit the wave button. It won't let me. I like the little wave button. All right. So we are to Virgo. No, we just did Virgo. We are to Libra. All right. So for Libra, we got the Ten of Cups. We are getting all the good cards. So for you, Libras, it's time to look to the future. It's time to look ahead. Whatever happened, happened. It's time to move forward. So this is what a card to get for this last Monday of this year, right? Look ahead. There's so many things waiting for you and on the horizon. So walking into the next year with a positive attitude is really super important for you. I love that. And I'm a Libra, so I like that card for me. So, all right. So now we have our Scorpio. So Scorpio, we have the High Priestess. We This deck is like psh, not fooling around. So for you, um, moving into this next year, think about all of the wisdom that you have and all of the wisdom that you may be able to share with others. You know, give yourself some credit. Um, you know so many things. You have You have so many hidden talents as well. So it's time to bring those out and really share them with others. That's what we have for you, Scorpio. And uh, can I just say that I love that card? That was a really, this deck, this is a super Linares tarot I'm using today. And I absolutely love it. Love it, love it. All right, so let's move on to our Sagittarius. So for Sagittarius today, we have the Four of Cups. So... You know, I think too, right now, you may kind of be feeling kind of meh. To me, this is the meh card. So with this card, you know, things are being presented to you, but it's really not what you want. Like, you need to think about what you want and really decide what it is so you could chase after it in the next year and go for it and make some new intentions and manifest it for the next year. So, you know, also consider maybe some options that you haven't considered before, you know, kind of like this card with this, you know, maybe this is something that is really awesome, but you're just like, I don't really know about it. I don't really think it's for me. Think about how, you know, try to think of it in a different perspective because maybe it is something that in the end will be something will be really awesome for you. So that brings us to Capricorn. I have to say these shuffle really nice as well. <clears throat> oh, I don't know how it's the middle of winter and my allergies are like right now. How is that even possible? I have so much snow on the ground. It's freezing cold. And I have a little heater on me because I'm a big baby in the cold. I'm not. I've lived in upstate New York my whole life, pretty much. And I don't like the cold. So there's that. <laughs> All right. So Aquarius. What do we got for you, Aquarius? All right. So for Aquarius, I'm just looking at this card. I really like it. So we have the Nine of Wands. So... You're just kind of standing guard right now. Like you are just, you're being a little bit too overprotective of what you want to do. Or maybe just even a little secretive of things going on. And now it's time to kind of take some of those wands down and start using them um, as far as action steps. Like these could be your action steps. And you're like so ready to do it. 
even though you kind of feel like, oh, I'm not so sure, I really feel like this is the time for you to start really taking the action steps to move forward and really go after what it is that you want. So really think about that. All right, so that brings us to the ever wonderful Aquarius. And you know, we're now in the age of Aquarius. And I just, I just hear the song in my head every time I say that, like every time I can't help it. <laughs> All right, so we have for you Aquarius is the page of swords. So Aquarius, for you, I think this week too is thinking before you talk or before you act, whichever that is, swords or thoughts and all of those airy things and what's floating around in your head. Instead of just jumping into it, really think about what it is that you want to say, how you want to say it. Hi, Severa. Hey. Um, how you want, um, like how you want to be portrayed, like how you want people to see you. I think that's really, um, this card is just saying like, just don't jump into it. Like really put some thought into it. So that's what we have for you Aquarius this week. And if anybody wants me to pull a card for them, just go ahead and pop it in the comments. Um, and if I missed your sign, if you missed me reading your sign, anyway, <laughs> you can go back and watch the replay and check it out. So, all right, let me get all this going. Um, today I wanted to also to talk a little bit uh, about tea leaf reading. Um, that is something else that I really love doing and um, I figured let's, let's do that and do a little tea leaf reading for the collective here. Um, Lily is mine. Do you have a specific question or do you just want a general card? Go ahead and let me know that. And I'm just gonna take a sip. Because my allergies are being crazy today and I don't understand why. All right. I could just pull a general card for you, Lily is mine, if you don't have a specific question. So have any of you guys ever had a tea leaf reading? A relationship card? Okay. We could do that. Just shuffling here. All right, so what do we got? We have the King of Pentacles. Um, King of Pentacles um, is kind of all about um, home and work and it is about the relationships and it's all about the earthly things. So whatever this card, you know, whoever this may represent for you is really coming through today. They are whoever that person that is there for you, who you go to um, to feel grounded and happy, um, that's the person that's coming through to you or whoever you know or whoever you may be thinking of, that person is really kind of like your home. So that's what I got for you today, Lilia. Lilia's mind. That's a really pretty name, Lilia. I like that. All right. So tea leaf reading. Has anyone ever had a tea leaf reading before? Um, I do offer them. So if you do feel like, feel like getting one, you can always hop over on my page. Also, make sure to jump over and give my um, page over at Stardust One or Tarot a like as well. And in my bio is a sign up for um, my Kickstarter for my deck. So hopefully soon we'll be getting that going, kicking it off, get it, yeah, just kidding. Sorry, I'm like, well, I love my corny jokes. So um, really, um, I just wanted to kind of go over, yes, you have, awesome. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about tea leaf reading because why not, right, it's fun. Um, and then also too, I wanted to do just kind of a little um, full moon ritual. Uh, to bring us, you know, to help release things, to bring us into the new year. Um, and we will do that in just a second. So, tea leaf reading, where did it come from? So, it came um, actually from China. So, through uh, during the 16th century. So, you know, way back when they didn't really have um, tea bags, obviously, or even diffuser, like the little tea diffuser things, they didn't really have that. They just threw the tea in the cup, let it settle, and drank it. So 
you know, it ended up, it's almost kind of like tarot was a game at first. And now, um, you know, this, you know, and then they started kind of using it for divination. Like, wait a minute, if we just kind of use our intuition and do these things, some of this stuff is actually making sense here. So then it kind of formed into a whole, um, a whole form of divination. And it's, it's a really cool, cool way to get a reading. All right, let me see here. Pull a card. For inspiration towards my diet change. Okay, let's see. <laughs> so, the tower. It may seem like it's a big change. It may seem overwhelming at first. But on the other side of it, it's what you need. And it's, it's important for you. And that's what you need to keep doing. So stick with it. Even when it seems really, really hard. So you could do it and you've got this and on the other side, you'll be really glad at the benefits of it. So what a card to pull for that, right? <laughs> so the best, <laughs> I'm telling you, I feel like every time I pull a card for you, it's like no nonsense. It's like the big card, like guess what? Boom, here you go. So yes, you keep on keeping on there, girl. Um, so what we have um okay tea leaf reading yes so what we really use um is black loose leaf tea is the best you're very welcome and excuse me my throat is being very weird today so um black loose leaf tea is um what most people use for readings and also um people will read turkish turkish tea as well <laughs> i can't even say that she needs amber <laughs> That's okay. We're here if you need us, right? You can text both of us if you need anything. Um, so um, the good thing about that those teas is that you want to use a tea that keeps its shape. So a green leaf tea isn't really good for tea leaf reading because they are kind of curled up and they'll open up. And then you'll just have like these super big clumps at the bottom and those are those are hard to read really. So, um, Turkish, t Turkish coffee is also good. Uh, I don't really do coffee as much. Um, I will if that's all I have, but I do really prefer to, to read tea because I feel like there's just more in there. I feel like with the reading coffee grinds, it's more of a negative space reading. So that's what you read more as with the tea leaves. It's, you could actually see more picture, you know, like little pictures or whatever pops up. So, um, I do have some loose leaf black tea here and that's what, you know, in my weird little baggie. So that's what really, you really want to use. Um, and also what's important too is the type of cup that you use. So the cup you don't want to use is like a mug like this because it's deep, you know, the tea, it's just going to all go on the bottom and it just straight up and down, even though it's super cute, definitely not a good one to use. So if you have a cappuccino cup, that's pretty good. You can use that because it's a little wider. Um, it does go down, but it's a little wider. You kind of want that wide lip, and that's really good to use um, for reading. You also have um, these types of cups that already have pictures in them. So this one um, comes with a book. So you could do your tea leaf reading, and then um, you can just kind of look up the symbols. So look at the eye, matches my shirt. See, matching. But um, you can use that to uh, read with, and that's really good for beginners too, um, this one. And I think you can find that pretty much anywhere, that type of cup, and the name of it isn't coming to me. So, um, so my favorites are just like these type of tea leaf reading cups. So this is just, it really is just your basic vintage teacup because those are kind of the best and I have to have fancy ones because I have I have another one coming too and it's super cute and I can't wait to get it but I love my teacups um going to um you know any sort of antique store looking for just random teacups that's also great to do too so see how this one is wide right and it's not too deep and it, it has this wide rim here and it just kind of slowly just lightly slopes in so this is good because it will kind of show you, the leaves will sit on it and it will be able to give you a really good picture. So that is something that 
that is definitely the way to go. My favorite one, which I use for my clients, is this one. Look how pretty it is. And it has the eye in it. And it just has here because there's different ways that you can re do a reading depending on what your client is asking for. And then here's the bottom of it. So that is definitely one of my favorites. I do love that one. Um, so yeah, so really just a nice wide open cup is what you are looking for and the best way to go about it. So I'm going to go ahead and it is, it is so pretty, isn't it? It's so pretty. Like I'm trying to not get the glare of the light, but I absolutely love it. And this is like real gold and everything. I love it. It's my little, this is like my baby. This goes on a special shelf. Um, so let's do a tea leaf reading and I'm actually going to use it as a part of our ritual as well so as um we'll just kind of go through it let me move my cards out of the way all right so first thing we're gonna do is get some candles out here so I have I have a dish and then I picked a couple of candles for us um, and this is really focusing on um, the full moon um, and releasing things to make room for other things we want to manifest, right? Because we can actually use each phase of the moon um, to work on our manifestation. And I am actually working on um, a program that I'm going to be coming out with hopefully um, next month or so. See how far I get. Um, thank you. Thanks. Um, and it is basically gives you, it's called the moon method, and it, it's basically a blueprint of how to manifest with each of the eight phases of the moon. Because you can use each one to kind of, as like kind of steps to get, to get where you need to be. So keep an eye out for that. So definitely follow me over on my um, Instagram at Stardust Wonder Tara. So anywho, um, this is the candles I'm going to use for today. Um, I tend to, I love candle magic. I'm always doing some sort of candle magic. Um, so that's what we have, of course, for today. So I'm going to use green. And for the green, I'm going, is for um, prosperity, success, money, or for money and prosperity and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna actually write that right on our candle. So I'm gonna just write on here, prosperity. So these are things that we want to bring in. So that there, the next candle, pink, and that is for love. And I'm going to write love and also self-love. Um, so we're going to do that. And love. And for this next one, and one chose purple. So for purple is um, really for power. Um, personal power. So that's the one I chose for us. And I'll write that on here. I have little bits of wax everywhere. And then yellow for success. So success in whatever it is that we want to bring in for this next year. So we will have that sitting there. Now when you do a tea leaf reading, um, actually I'm going to use my other cup for this. And this one has a cool little plate as well. Look at that plate on that. And this is my little tea, my teaspoon. So when you put in um, water and tea for the cup, um, you don't need to drink it. You can really just set the intention. And you need just a tiny bit of tea. You do not need a lot at all. I'm gonna use this tea today. Um, I go to Salem, Massachusetts pretty frequently because I'm in upstate New York, so I'm only a couple hours away. And there's a tea shop um, uh, I always go to. So I'm just going to even show you, like, really? Look, just a, just a pinch. That's all you need. And you're like, is that, like, enough? Like, what? Nope. That's all you need is a pinch. Because when you put too much, it definitely makes it very muddy and whatever. So you could just see it in there. It doesn't look like a ton, right? But... That is all you need. Next, we'll do the water. And that is just a little bit as well. I better hold on to that. So for this, you only need just a little bit of water too. You don't need a lot. 
So we're gonna go ahead, and when you're reading for someone, you want the handle to point to your client. So if you're reading for yourself, you point it to yourself. If you're reading for someone else, you point it out towards them. So I'm going to leave this and we're gonna let that steep for a few minutes as we kind of get everything else ready. So I want to, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna light these candles. And we're gonna set them on, on here and I'll take a picture afterward and post it. So, oh, I just broke that. Put that one back in there. All right, so we have our purple candle and this was our, our power for personal power. And that is the one that we are using for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to put it right on our dish get a couple drops of wax there so we can stick it on there. I like every once in a while these like snowflakes kind of go crazy. So there we go. Stick that right on there. Now what I'm going to do too is um, I'm going to light each candle from the candle before it so that we kind of form a circle, right? So this is kind of just bringing all of the all of these intentions of these candles together because they're all working together to bring you what you are looking for if this one wants to stick it's being some sort of way come on now there we go and always make sure your candles are secure that's super important so next we are going to go ahead and we're going to use our success candle and we're gonna light that right off of this one so I will light it right off there because also they can kind of these intentions can kind of work off each other so with your personal power comes success right so that is kind of part of how this spell ritual works however you want to say it so and with that success and having self-love and also you're becoming successful and you're deciding and you're feeling more confident. So it's kind of like, kind of like a story. This is kind of like, we're just, we're writing the story of how we want this to go. And that's what's great about doing candle, any sort of candle work is that you can really kind of write the story of how you want things to go and how you want to ma manifest things. So we have that. So now we have the three. And by having our personal power, our, our success, our self-love, that's also, that's gonna bring us our prosperity. So we light that one next. Ooh, and that one really like, see that? That's happening, that one. So you can really, you can also tell by the candles, by the flame, you can read the flame, you can read the wax afterwards, which once this melts down, um, I will take a picture and I will post it and I will read the wax for us as well. So, but these candles, these ones take probably, depending, about an hour, you know, to go down. Yes, so here we go. We are, you know, so here we are. We have now set that in motion. We've set that story, like I said, thanks Amber, in motion. And hopefully not dropping things on ourselves here. So we have our leaves are just about steeping. And what I want everyone to also do is kind of get a, um, I just wanna show you real quick too. Look. Look how much like the success one, I know the light isn't gonna, the success one is like busting out way above the other ones. So that to me is saying that by us doing this, it's really, um, yes, I love wax divination as well. A friend of mine, she does a lot of candles stuff and she is always showing me, she's like, I just see mush. I don't see anything, but I'm like, wait, let's look at this. And I, I kind of will like, 
take the picture of it and draw it out for her and like the little shapes I see. Yeah, it's it's actually kind of close to even the tea leaf reading is finding the signs um, maybe um, also to um, with the wax what direction it's flowing in, what, um, which one burned down first, which one has a highest flame. So you kind of pay attention to all those little things. And you know, you're obviously not supposed to leave your candles just out and about and leave them anyway. So you're kind of have them with you. And I like, that's why I like putting them on little plates too, because if I am not sitting in my office and I have to go upstairs, I will bring it with me and just kind of set it in my, my kitchen island and kind of just keep an eye on it and just watch it and see how it's burning and which one burns first um if you know if a candle burns down and there's like one little piece of wax standing up that means there may be a block in that area so that's something that's really really cool too so for um oh let's add our herbs because i'm always candles and herbs and tea and here i am <laughs> i'm always doing all the things so i'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sprinkle this on the bottom of our um, candle. So the first herb I'm going to use is lemon balm. Lemon balm is great for healing, for success, um, even for love. So we're gonna kind of put it all around the bottom. And again, I'll take a picture of when it's lit and then I'll take a picture of when it's um, burned down. And then also I'm gonna do some alfalfa for prosperity. And I do have them all labeled so they all don't just, you know, look the same at this point too. I kind of can tell about how they smell, which one it is. So alfalfa, we have some alfalfa there. We have that. And then also too, I wanted to add um, some rose for love. And again, that's love, regular love, self-love, love, just love. And I, I like to do love candle spells as well. Lots of fun. Those are always very interesting, like relationship ones and stuff like that. Uh, I will do those. So we're going to put some of that on the bottom there. And so what the herbs are doing is really kind of their properties are mixing with the properties of the candles, the intentions that we set out there. The flame is bringing them in and out into the universe so that, um, you know, it will amplify our intentions, whatever we want to bring in and what we wrote on the candles and that sort of thing. So it's all just kind of, you know, and you can really, if you don't have colored candles, you can just light white candles and write your intentions on them. It doesn't need to be fancy. It doesn't need to be any of that. But um, here, I'm gonna show you. See, we have that. We have all our herbs. Look how pretty. And that success, see how that success one is really like, blazing so that's super cool too so before I go ahead and dump this out I would love to have everyone just kind of remember their candle out take a minute and just really think about what it is that you want to bring in um into this next year so we'll take a minute and close your eyes if you feel you want to take a deep breath what is it that you want to bring into 2021 awesome and if you feel free to share if you want and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna kind of set it right over let's see if I could do this nope. ah, my herbs are spilling all right it's okay there we go we got this there we go so I'm gonna set this right over just to kind of infuse those intentions into our tea leaves and really work that in there and you know boost it give it a boost it's all about the magical boost right so i'm going to set our candles aside here and we'll go ahead and we will get this out so when i dump it out um if the person's there and they feel like they want to drink the tea, I will definitely let them. That's doesn't matter to me. But if not, I will, or if I'm doing an online reading, um, I will usually just dump it out. So what I do is I just kind of dump it like that. 
And some of the tea leaves may fall out and that's totally fine because that tends to happen. So you could kind of like roll it. And then when it's almost out, you dump it over and you tap it out. And then you will have your reading. Where's my, oh. But first, I have to get my paper towel because doing that up in the air was quite interesting. So we will do that. So yeah, so when, you know, so now we have our cup here, right? So we're gonna keep that handle out. And it doesn't look like there's very much in here, right? But it definitely, um, it definitely is, it has some things to tell us here. So that is something I'm gonna look at, right? So I'm gonna turn it towards me so that I can, I can look at, at through this perspective of the client to see what we're looking at here. So anything um, usually on the bottom is something we need to pay more attention, you know, attention to. So on the way bottom, where's my little spoon? There it is. So on the way bottom here, I see an arrow. So that's something that we want to pay attention to right away. So these kind of are similar to Lenormand. If you read Lenormand, like you can really use those types of um, those pictures and the meanings and use them that way, or you could just go intuitively. It's really what resonates with you. So for me, for the arrow, and since this arrow is pointing, it's pointing out here, that is good news. So it seems to me like a coming up for this new year that, that some, we may be getting some good news. So there may be good news on the horizon. So yay, I take that, right? And then next we have here is um, almost kind of like a ball. I'm gonna, that's just a ball right there I'm taking. Um, and when you're doing this too, it's really the first picture that pops in your head because if you just start staring at this and we're like, ah, oh, I think this is this, but maybe that, you'll be here forever and ever and there's really no point in doing it. It's really just with the first one, trust your intuition, that first one that pops in your head. So um, that really to me too, since the arrow is pointing away from that, um, that is like something that is setting off the good news. So a couple of things may be happening that maybe you're like, all right, well, this doesn't seem like a good news type thing, but they need to happen in order for your good news to be delivered. So um, you may be thinking like, oh, all right, you know, this day's not going the greatest, but by the end of the day, something great happens, you get your good news. So really that's just telling me for you to stick to it. Like just keep going, keep that intention of what you need or want in your head because you may have to go through some, some nonsense, but at the end you'll get that good news that you were looking for. Okay, so um, just trying to like pull up my thing here. Stop it. All right, so we'll move on here. Um, so with this here, I kind of feel like um, you have this arrow, right? And then we have this right here, right? And to me, it's kind of like a snake. So with the snake, um, right away intuitively, I'm just kind of thinking of um, somebody that may not be telling you the truth. Um, you're gonna get the good news or somebody that's not, that seems happy for you, but really isn't. So just being aware of that and accepting it, that not everyone's gonna be happy with your good news, right? So that's okay too. But then right above it, way at the top here, we have this other, um, this other little piece kind of hanging at the top. So when things are hanging at, up at the top, that means they're gonna be right away. So I really am thinking that even though you are feeling like this person may not be happy for you at first, that it's time for you to just let that go and kind of let it go with grace, be graceful in that. So, you know, I think coming into that new year, there's gonna be a couple of things that pop up. Maybe there may be a person that is not really being genuine, but be graceful with them, let it go because the good news is coming. So that's what I have for you. 
for our tea leaf reading. So I will put that over there. Hello, hello. And if anyone hopped on here um, and you want a card, just let me know. So I'm going to, okay, I put my mess up over here. So I will, like I said, I'm going to wait for those two to, to burn down and then I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a little wax reading on them as well. So, um, you know, that's what I have for you today. That is the end of our, um, look, I really, I like made a mess with that water today. I'm usually pretty good at it. Pouring water up in the air. Try it. It's that hard. <laughs> I mean, it is hard rather. Duh. Um, so if you want a card or anything, let me know. If not, that's what I have for you today. And um, thank you so very much for being here. Make sure to check me out at Stardust Wanderer Tarot. And I'm back here every Monday at 9 um, a.m. PST and 12 noon Eastern Time. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to send me a message. And I will go ahead and I'm going to post our, our ritual, our spell. And even if you take the picture of the candles lit, and keep it as like a screensaver, that's a great way to kind of remind yourself of your intention and your of the new year. So um, thank you very, very much. I hope you guys had some fun today and I'm gonna be corny again and say, I'll see you next year. So see you next year. Bye everyone, thank you.